It is Friday morning, May 29th of 2020. And chances are, this is just going to be a rambling guy's daily drive. Like, uh, like the other ones are so, so focused. Yeah. Good morning. You know, at some point, or, or in the past, Fridays used to really mean something. If, you know, if you were a working stiff. For most people that worked the nine to fives, a Friday meant it was the last day of the week and you now have, at the end of that work day, you now have two full days to go and do the stuff that you want to do when you're not at work. Well, that's been kind of tossed in the trash. Number one, there's a lot of people that are now out of work. And uh, hopefully that will start to be alleviated soon. And the other thing is not everybody, back when things were more normal, worked a 9 to 5 Monday through Friday kind of job. You know, growing up, uh, when I was when I was going to school, especially when when I was at Tinker Toy Tech, what we used to call Broward Community College, <laughs> my uh, my schedule was very very different. So I would have Monday through Friday one to two classes a day where I would go out to the BBC, sorry, BCC, BBC is British Broadcasting Corporation, which nothing to do with this story. I would go to class Monday through Friday, sometimes Monday through Thursday, sometimes Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. I mean, it would just depend on when the classes, when the classes were. And I would have one or two classes, which would be anywhere from two to six hours, depending on the class. Then I would go home and, and do whatever study that I needed to do. And then I would get ready for work. Now, I had a variety of jobs during this period of time. Uh, one particular summer, I didn't take any classes, and I worked at an ice plant. Now, this is in this is in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, in the summer. So, temperature outside was upper 80s, lower 90s, if not hotter. The temperature inside the ice plant was. 10 to 20 degrees and talking Fahrenheit here not uh, Celsius so it was really cold but the various jobs that I had working at this ice plant uh, when I first started there and my father my father kind of got me the job there because he worked for this company that uh, supplied the large-scale ice machines that this factory used. It was for Southland Corporation, 7-Eleven here in the States. And the job I had when I first started working there was stacking pallets. And 
what this involved was you had you had uh, somebody that would be on the line that would take these eight pound bags of ice you know the eight, eight pounds of, of ice would drop into an air blown bag they would rip that off of the machine that the ice had dropped down into and starting on a conveyor belt which would it would get wrapped go to the end of that conveyor belt and somebody would pick up that eight pound bag of ice and they would put it into a larger paper bag with four other bags for a grand total of 40 pounds of ice and then that bag would be quick closed sealed with staples my job was to take that bag, 40 pound bag of ice, and stack it on a pallet, typically six bags per row, and around six to eight rows. So six times eight is 48, times six is, it's more or less close to 300 pounds of ice on a single pallet. And then a, um, a forklift would come over and pick up that pallet and take it to a refrigerated truck that would be loading. And in the summertime, trucks were constantly being loaded. That They were on a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week shift with two large machines that each had uh, 150 ton tons of ice capacity as you know within a 24-hour period so in a 24-hour period this this facility was moving around 300 tons of ice that is 600,000 pounds of ice each day 600,000 pounds of ice. And when I first started that job, I was 17, 18 years old. When I my first day, it was like, oh, phew, this is like ridiculously easy. Just stack a pallet, 40 pounds at a time, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. And then I found by lunchtime, my arms were getting very tired. It would be like 40, 40, 40, 40. By the end of the day, especially that first day, I could barely lift my arms over my head. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how many times I had lifted 40 pounds to stack these pallets. And it wasn't like I was, you know, picking them up and pushing them up over my head and you know I basically it was just like move them from where they were to where the pallet was <laughs> but my arms were just exhausted and that was that was like the job that I had during that summer uh, when it wasn't summer and I was working mostly at night uh, I had a variety of jobs uh, working I worked at restaurants, you know, bussing tables, that kind of thing. I was never a waiter. Um, I was never like the the person that, that leads you to your table, whatever they call you, know, a hostess or host. Wasn't a chef, you know. I mean, I would clear tables, take dishes to the back, stack them in the dishwasher, wash them, put them away, make sure that various supplies were filled salt, pepper, ketchup, mustard, whatever, whatever it was that the, the restaurant needed someone with, you know, limited skills. It's pretty much what I had to do. And I always hated those jobs. I did not like doing that job because it was just, it was just drudgery. Just not, you know, and, and completely thankless. You know, if you're a if you're a waitress, and it doesn't happen all the time, I always make sure that, that when I'm in a restaurant, don't do that truck, thank you. If I'm in a restaurant and my, I have someone that is serving me, I always, always, always say thank you. Thank you for your, your service. I appreciate the fact 
regardless of, of whether the food is good or not, it has nothing to do. And here's the thing, you know, if you go to a restaurant and the food isn't good, don't take it out on the wait staff because the food wasn't good. That's not their fault. Always tip at least 15 to 20 percent, even if the food's not good, because that's got nothing to do with that. But the other job I had, and I did this all over Fort Lauderdale, was parking cars. I, within a three to four year period that I was doing this, and it was, it, it was like all over town. I worked at uh, restaurants, I worked at hotels, I worked at nightclubs, I worked wherever it was that people needed me to park cars. And in that time period, I must have driven minus, you know, some of the exotics. I must have driven just about every single type of car that was out there. And, uh, it was fun. It, I got a lot of exercise. I, you know, I would be on the ramp and somebody would, would need their car. So I would get their keys and I would go and get their car, run out quickly as I could, bring their car around to them. They would pull in, get out of the car. I would drive the car down to a space, tag it so that I, people could find it later, and then run back up to the ramp again. And well, I'm at work, so you know what? I'm going to talk about some of my experiences parking cars in hopefully this afternoon's version of Guy's Daily Drive, unless something else comes up. But if you'd like to get a hold of me, uh, my email address is guy at mymac.com. Uh, my Twitter account is uh, twitter.com forward slash macparrot, twitter.com forward slash vertshark. You can see all of this content, whether it's video or audio, uh, over at vertshark.com. And uh, also, of course, on YouTube for the video. And if you do watch on a video, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Do that again. Like, share, subscribe. That's how that works. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, what else? Uh, there's the podcast, Guy's Daily Drive, which you'll not only get this podcast, but you'll also get uh, the Mac to the Future podcast, the audio from that, uh, which I do every Wednesday night with Lawrence Sklar and David Ginsberg. David Ginsberg and Lawrence Sklar, as a matter of fact, just had their 100th in touch with iOS episode last night, and they had Kelly Kelly uh, McGinnis on as a as a guest, and and that was a that was a fun watch. I watched that one and participated a little bit because that's what I do. Uh, if you'd like to support the things that I do, there is Patreon.com forward slash Mac Parrot. There is Coffee K O dash F I dot com forward slash Mac Parrot and PayPal PayPal dot M E forward slash Mac Pettit. All of those things. And uh, I do the My Mac podcast with Gaz Maz every single Saturday. And of course, the aforementioned Mac the Future podcast with David Ginsburg and Warren Sklar. So that is going to do it, I think, for this morning. Thank you all so very much for watching. I appreciate the fact that you have taken the time to watch and or listen to Guy's Daily Drive. And I will see you, hopefully, this afternoon. Bye-bye.